Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today I want to make a video just going back to the basics of how to deal with tinnitus and get into a better place so you hopefully won't be in such a bad state. Um, so let's start off with the basic idea that in a huge majority of cases, the sound that you hear will not hurt you. Uh, why is it important to acknowledge that? Because if we acknowledge that this, the sound will not hurt us, it will not harm us, it, it starts to change the chemistry in our, in our body. Why? Because when you're always consciously thinking about how this is a threat to you, the result is your subconscious brain. You have a conscious brain and you have a subconscious brain. And your subconscious brain starts to overreact. And it sends chemistry into your body that's tell telling you you have to do something. There's something wrong. You can't go to sleep. You've got to deal with this. You, you can't do other things. You have to think about this thing. And it becomes a cycle. And it, and it may take some reinforcement to really get to that. If you need to go to the doctor... Uh, because you're not sure, do that. Go to the doctor and have them check your ears, and you know, and let them tell you that the sound will not hurt you. You know, hopefully you can get some reinforcement on that. I think, you know, a huge majority, almost everybody who has the sound. There's going to be a few those exceptions, and I don't want you to think too hard about that either. But you know, it's not going to hurt you. It's a sound. Now. In terms of the loudness of this sound, compared to a lot of other sounds around you, um, there, there are surely sounds that are louder than your tinnitus, and you live with those sounds every day. Um, so you could even purposely have a sound, and most people actually who have tinnitus actually do that, where you, you're going to play some sound that helps you to not notice your tinnitus, and that, that's the thing we want to work toward is being able to not notice it as often and not be bothered by it either. So uh, for me, it's been an air purifier, um, but also for a lot of people, they, they, they might go so far as hearing aids that play a sound. Uh, they have those on the market uh, that, you know, you can just get your speakers or whatever you want to use that, and, you know, you maybe even at some headphones uh, that play a sound. Uh, you know, they say don't play too loud. You start hitting like, 50, 60, 70 decibels, that's, that's getting too far. But, uh, and by and large, I think most of you wouldn't, wouldn't even do that naturally. So if you, if you want to play some sound and you can find a sound that is close to the sound of the tinnitus, that's especially good in the beginning. You could even have two sounds if you wanted to, you could have two different things going on. Maybe one, one's tinnitus and one's a relaxing sound, but just things that kind of, can kind of distract your brain from thinking about it so much. And the sound can do a lot for you. Okay, so we've gotten that far. Uh, it's not a threat. We're going to play a background sound. Um, now, next, we do need to try to slowly change our thinking about tinnitus. And again, this goes back to the subconscious and the conscious brain. Um, you know, there's a lot of studies about pain, for example, where if you have a back pain and you and you think about it a lot, You'll, diver, you'll develop sort of a, net, a nerve network that helps you experience that pain. And the pain is always there. It's always bothering you. And you're always thinking about that pain. But if you look at some studies that have been done, there are, there are a lot of people where they actually have a, a rather damaged back. They have some pretty bad you know, spot things, but they don't feel very much pain, maybe none. And, and they're not bothered by it. While other people who don't even have a problem or it's a very minor problem, they, they have a lot of pain. And, and when you look at the difference between the two groups of people, uh, the difference is that the one group is really thinking about it all the time. So learning not to think about the pain actually helps your brain, uh, the whole subconscious, the, the nervous system, to, to actually create new networks that, that get you out of that pain. And, and so it's the same thing with tinnitus. I mean, and uh, what I say is a little bit theoretical, but I do believe it because we have a lot of reinforcement for that now, that the more you're thinking about the tinnitus, the more you're going to be bothered by it, especially if you're thinking about it in a negative way, which often we do. 
Uh, I don't now. I, I, I think I've, I've gotten past that, but it wasn't easy. Um, so, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to develop a, a, a nerve network. We have, we have nerves going all through our body, right? And they can be trained in to do different things. We've talked about like making beautiful art or playing the piano or doing sports or uh, speaking another language. We, we develop a whole nerve network that allows us to be able to do those amazing things. And there are some, ma there are some amazing people in this world who do those things. And is why can they do them, do them so well? Because they spend so much time thinking about playing the piano and doing it that that's all they think about all the time. They're always playing the piano. And even when they're not playing the piano, it's you know, they're thinking about playing the piano. And then, you know, it could be drawing. It could be all kinds of different things. Um, so if we're always thinking about tinnitus, we, 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 it gets stronger. And then it's harder to get away from it. So we have to, so this is like the next part, right? We have to actively be involved in training our brain to do something else more of the time. And at first, it may be quite difficult if you're, if you already are in this state where you're thinking about it all the time, or you may have some very repetitive patterns where every morning or every evening or, you know, sometime you, you always are, are, are get into this state where it's bothering you. So you're going to have to you know, deal with those times because they may be strongly reinforced patterns. And what, what, why do we have these strongly, these strong patterns of always thinking about the tinnitus? Because we, we developed it. We got this sound and it, and it freaked us out. And then we, we got where we were thinking about it all the time. So what, and also we developed a strong belief. We developed a strong belief that this, sound was something that was bad, that we needed to do something about, that's harmful. Um, and um, so to get to where it doesn't bother you, you have to change your beliefs. Um, and that this could get really to the core of, for a lot of people where you might start to disagree with me a lot. Because if we challenge your beliefs, you might disagree that, that no, I'm right. You know, uh, I'm only giving you my point of view and you know, you may not like it. You may not agree with it. You may think there's another way. Like for example, some people are going to say, well, that's all well and good, but my, my tinnitus is loud and we have to find a cure. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think it would be great if we could find a cure. I know some people are working on it, you know, but what we have to do right now is find a way to be in a better place in our thoughts. And we can we can deal with the tinnitus so much better. If you're set on finding a cure, that may not get you the result, as good of results as first getting your, your thinking in, a, in the right place. And then you can keep, keep trying to find the cure. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the idea that this is something that has happened to you that has ruined your life. Uh, well, there are a lot of people where it temporarily really threw a wrench in, in their life, but then they got better. So uh, how did they do that? Well, they, they changed how they thought about it. And so I want to invite you to see if you can begin to change your beliefs about the tinnitus. Um, and m maybe you can start to accept the sound. I mean, I'm sitting here in a quiet room. There are some birds in the background, but I've, I've got a steady ringing in my ear. It's somewhere in here. You know, I couldn't tell you exactly where it is. Sometimes it will kind of volume up and then volume down. Um, fortunately, it doesn't do that too often. Um, and it'll usually be on one side. But I, I, I don't mind it. It doesn't bother me anymore. I, I'm not trying to solve anything. Um... And uh, it's just a part of me. I accept it. I even go so far as saying I'm I'm happy uh, that I have this sound, um, because you know it led me to do a lot of good things. Because I had to to learn how to change my thoughts, and uh, I've gotten better at that thanks to tinnitus. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously it would be great if it were to go away tomorrow, but if it did. 
it really wouldn't change me that much now. Um, I mean, it would be nice to go into a quiet room and just hear nothing. But I don't walk around thinking, ah, oh, poor me, you know. Uh, it's just who I am. And, and um, I used to do some videos before about how it's a beautiful sound. I like it. Um, why, why, would I, why would I do something like that? Because I want to train my, my brain to, to treat it differently, including my subconscious brain, so that I, I can function normally. And I do. I, I accept the sound. I say it's a nice sound. Um, does it bother me? Yeah, it's, honestly, it's probably not that nice of a sound. I got, I got to be honest. But, I, but I, I say that, you know, because I don't want to. I don't want to fight it. I don't want to be angry about it. I don't want to feel hopeless. I definitely felt hopeless before. I don't now. I, I, and the words you say, again and again, are who you are. So. You know, you can retrain who you are and say, I, I'm I'm doing better now. I, I've decided, you know, I'm going to start accepting this. I'm going to be okay with it. I know it's not a threat to me. It doesn't bother me. I've got these background sounds. They help me somewhat to not notice it. And I'm getting better at um, whenever I do hear it to say, oh, well, okay, I hear it, but I'm going to go and do this now. And then you have a set of things that you can do learning a language, drawing, playing piano, dancing, you know, anything you can, your, your mind can imagine. Um, read a book, you know, do those things and get where you say, oh, you know, this doesn't bother me. I can, I'm going to do this now. Who cares? You know, and the more you can kind of catch it, catch you thinking that thought and, and be like, okay, I'm going to do this instead. You know, you'll get better at it. It's going to take some practice. So, okay. So that's sort of my little going back to basics, trying to just focus in on the story that the storyline that might help you get better. So that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>